Everyone experiences the feelings of sadness every now and again. When these feelings have a knock-on effect, making you feel persistently sad, unable to function correctly, and in more serious cases, wanting to self-harm, we question, why do people suffer from depression? According to news reports, NHS figures have revealed that prescriptions for antidepressants rose by 43% in the past four years. Is this struggling economy leaving many battling with not only debts and job woes, but clinical depression as well? I decided to ask the townspeople what they thought of this rapid increase. Here's what they said. Stage of the country with no work. A lot of people don't work who need work. It plays on their minds, doesn't it? Well, I don't know. Is there been increase? Well, probably because they've got no jobs and this, that and the other and can't get work. I don't know. I don't know. I can't give you a... I think it's ridiculous. I think it's probably due to the lack of work uh, gets people down. I know people personally that have been on them because of uh, losing their jobs and stuff. So I've just been the pressure of life. Well, if you, if you haven't got enough money, which is the thing that seems to control most people's lives, um, you know, things get a little bit harder. So you see, um, you know, people must be a little bit on the depressed side. You know, there's plenty to be pressed about. You know, uh, but you've got to be optimistic and uh, be a bit positive about things, but uh, let's hope things all work out all right. But there are organisations available to help. Places such as Depression Alliance find ways of using new procedures to help make a long-term impact to the lives of those suffering. A negative change in the economy can lead to more pressure in the workplace. Some working longer hours can struggle to balance commitments at home. Do you think that this has influenced a rise in people suffering from depression? Joined with me today is a lecturer from the University of Northampton, Fiona Burberry. Fiona is originally an occupational therapist turned university lecturer. Here's what she had to say on the matter. I think it could have done people's ability to balance their lifestyle, their family, their responsibilities, their commitments extra pressure on resources is bound to some extent to create extra stress and stress can undermine some people's mental health. It's said that working in the wrong job can trigger depression, although being active, connecting with others and continuing to learn is good for mental health. What type of effects are brought on by unemployment? One of the things that a job offers is a, a sense of status, it leaves you clear about who you are in relation to other people and um, gives you some responsibilities and um, a reason, a purpose. If you take a, a employment away from a person, then you remove a lot of those structures and um, responsibilities and in doing so you can undermine how a person sees themselves, so their sense of self, their self-esteem, the extent to which they can have a positive influence on the things around about them. Those who experience unemployment may take that as a rejection, so I think that for me the main link is, a, is around what a job gives you by way of sense of purpose and structure and so on to your daily life, but also how you see yourself, what you, how you feel you relate to the rest of the world. Organisations around are known for offering a talking therapy, aiming to solve problems concerning emotions and behaviours by creating goals and structured procedures. Are these services more beneficial compared to a use of the range of antidepressants available? It depends on um, the severity of your depression and experiencing clinical depression. Once you've got good brain chemistry that results from having your antidepressant medications, you're then in a position to be able to do something constructive perhaps about your situation. It's really not a case of is one better than the other, it's a case of um, needing to have both. What the talking therapies do for people is allow them to understand what it was about the situation they were in before they became depressed or as they became depressed that perhaps contributed. And if you are prescribed antidepressant medication, take that for as long as your doctor says you should take it. 
and that once you've been taking it long enough to be feeling better, rather than just stopping your medication, you then use your talking therapies to help pick your way through the problems that, that took you down that road in the first place. If you or anyone you do know is suffering from depression, do not feel alone. You can find out more by visiting depressionalliance.org or visiting changingmindcenter.co.uk, which are based in Northampton, in order to find out about new strategies available to you.